Welcome to God Encounters. We're so glad that you've joined us today. Today my guest is James Autry. I'm excited to have him here. James lives in the beautiful Pacific Northwest and has a ministry called Serving Our Neighbors, um, which I know is certainly true about you. Yes, So thank you. <laughs> welcome to the show today. Glad to be a part. Yeah. Thank you so much. So that's an interesting name. So can you tell me how you came up with that name for your ministry? Absolutely. Okay. Well, back in 1999, there was this thing called the Y2K scenario where oh. a lot of computer systems were going to fail. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, there was a lot of talk about it. And there was a lot of work that was done to fix it and all that kind of stuff. But there was a group of pastors and a couple of business guys, including myself. I was running a Christian radio station in town, 1330 AM. For Crawford Broadcasting. Right. And they said, you know, let's get together and let's figure out how we can pray and serve and be ready for whatever may happen. Mm. And one of the pastors, George Ledoux with, from Tiger, said, hey, let's call this Serving Our Neighbors. Okay. <laughs> and so he offered up the name. We were meeting at Tom Baker's office there at Portland Foursquare and just over the year just began to strategize and plan how we could be ready you know in, in any kind of situation not just this but in the future as well mm -hmm. and to begin to collaborate around prayer and service and i really sensed something was going to happen not necessarily with y2k but that something in that particular vein of prayer and service and as y2k came, came and went and then 9 11 came and went it's just a steering committee of guys that were meeting together mm -hmm. um, back in 2000 six or seven, God said, I need you to set this up as a nonprofit. And I said, <laughs> why would I want to set up a nonprofit? I'm running a radio station. My wife is working with the Hilton. I've got two boys, two dogs, you know, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's like, I don't have time to run a nonprofit. Right. And then after about a year or so, God said, I'm going to give you some funding. I need you to set up a nonprofit. <laughs> wow. So he was persistent. <laughs> he was. Good. And so I did that. You know, yeah. we set up a nonprofit right after we had started and helped uh, create the Christian Chamber of Commerce of the Northwest. Oh, now let's exactly, stop a minute here. Exactly. You started that. Well, we were part of the team that began to put that wow. together, yes. I didn't know that. Yeah, Charlie okay. and Bill Kenyon have moved from Las Vegas, and we met with them and a couple other friends of ours and at KPDQ Studios. Uh, we really felt that we wanted to get behind them mm -hmm. and set that up. And so in wow. that process of those first two years, we helped them get it up and running. Wow. And then after that time they said, hey James, you know, we feel led to move to Roseburg to work with the Boys Ranch. Would you consider taking over the Christian Chamber and running that? So we did. And so because I had this public charity set up, um, I, about a year later, in February of 2009, one of my radio listeners called me and said, hey, you've been talking about doing prayer over the radio and so forth. I'd love to meet with you and talk with you. So I did. And she outlined how she would like to help, and I was wanting to do all night prayer and have a prayer program and all this kind of stuff. And she said, you know, I want to do this. I don't want to do it through my church or personally. How can we set this up? And I said, you know what? I just happened to form a public charity. <laughs> we right. could give the money to that and have that entity buy the radio time. Wow. And so she wrote out a check for $55,000. Oh, my goodness. Put it in the bank, and wow. it sat there for a year. Wow. Because as I began working together with the company I was with, they wanted to add more things to this and that. And I went back to her a month later in March of 2009. I said, you know what, this is what's happening. And she said, you know what, God says you're supposed to use that for whatever he says. And again, I'm thinking, why do I need $55,000 <laughs> in the bank? Wow, in well, a bank I know account. what I could do with it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Bring it on, Lord. Okay. <laughs> so, Lord, what is your plan here? How do you want to engage? So, again, it sat in the, in the bank for a year. And as Charlie and Ken said, let's, you know, we want to really turn this over to a younger guy and someone who's got a vision for the city and praying into the mm. city. And at that time, I was doing a lot of work with National Day Prayer. I was a state coordinator working with Shirley Dobson and coordinating all kinds of prayer initiatives throughout the state and the city and so forth. And she said, um, you know, we want you to consider that. Now, at the time, we didn't have a really good revenue model with the Christian Chamber. We had a few memberships. And we couldn't pay them, and they couldn't pay me. <laughs> and, so, and my wife had just resigned from the Hilton Hotel and had wow. our third son. Oh, wow. And so she was the director of sales and marketing with the Hilton in Vancouver. And so, and it was also 2009 when the economy was crashing. And I'm thinking, Lord, what are we supposed to do? And God says, quit your day job and start, resign from the radio station and just live by faith and just launch out of the boat. <laughs> Get out there and walk on water with me. Mm-hmm. And that had been the testimony of my life. I've done that for all my life. And so as I did that, 
God began to provide and the board of directors said, you know what, let's use that initial funding to allow you to, to make a little bit of money. I still had some income coming from the radio station with the contracts that I had. And then uh, let's kind of revamp the model for the Christian Chamber and get that up and running and, mm. and so that that can start paying you. And so half of my mm. income came from the Christian Chamber and the other half came from donations. And then about two years later, God gave us another gift of 100000 Wow. Uh, through a, a Christian business guy that had invested in Apple many years ago. And God said to, through him and his son-in-law to put that in there. Wow. And that allowed us to set the ministry up as a nonprofit, even more so with established offices and a, hmm. all the different uh, resources that you need to, hmm. to maintain that. And my ultimate goal is just to see this multiply all over the city and the mm -hmm. nation and just to serve wherever God says, yeah, and to be a part of what he's doing in the city. Wow. <laughs> well, we certainly covered a lot of questions mm. already. Because <laughs> um, you're a very busy man, yes. this I know. Uh, time management with you, I'm sure, is very key. Very You've critical. You've had to learn how to do that well. Yeah. And you have a, a wife and three boys? Three boys, yes. I didn't realize you had three children. Yes, um, William has just turned 18, just graduated oh, from David Douglas High School. Oh. Oliver is 17, and today he got his driver's license, oh, so he boy. was pretty stoked. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> and uh, my youngest son, Alec, is uh, nine, going on 10 in December, and he was born in the car on the way to the hospital. Oh, my gosh. Now, that's so. the one I've met. <laughs> he takes along with you sometimes. Yes, he I've does. I've seen him. So. Yep, so Alec is a lot of fun. Wow. And likes being the third parent in the household. Oh, so. <laughs> and I know that your wife must be one understanding woman. She because is. Because you are gone a lot, but she sounds mm -hmm. like she holds down the fort. She does. She's a great uh, manager, organizer. Like I said, she was a director of sales marketing for the Hilton. Wow. I met her at the Red Lion Hotel in Modesto when I was working oh for Full gosh. Gospel Headquarters and oh. their Northern California branch. And, you know, she was a sales manager. I was the event planner, and God hooked us up. Wow. And uh, then I moved here, and I've uh, been here 22 years in the Portland metro area just pursuing God. And she's been very patient, and we've gone through lots of challenges and struggles that Sounds like everybody it. goes through. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it, it's it's been an adventure. And she's hung out there and, and knows that more the best is yet to come. <laughs> yeah, well, that's great. Wow. So she also enjoys uh, watching her uh, son's, uh, her brother's uh, little baby, who's now turning four. So oh. she's been enjoying being a mom and, yeah. and a, kind of like a grandma, but not really. But, you know, yeah. her life is very full. She got, actually got promoted last uh, year from being soccer mom to soccer coach. So, <laughs> so <laughs> wow. Well. And she's really good at coaching. That's great. Yep, wow. Sounds she like has, she's got a lot of talents, too. She does. So. She's uh, gifted and uh, brilliant and a reader and just uh, could easily go into any kind of career. Wow. And as uh, in this season, taking care of kids. And I think she'll do some yeah. amazing things in the future. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. Well, um, so you've told us a little bit about your background. Sure. Um, can you tell us a little more? I can. Well, you may hear I talk a little bit different. <laughs> <laughs> when I got into radio, I had to turk learn how to talk right. Okay. <laughs> uh, but I grew up in South Georgia, a oh. uh, little tiny town. Uh, okay. Uh, just about 5,000 people, the biggest in the county. And uh, my heart and prayer was to be an artist and to sing. I've been singing since I was a little kid. No. Yes, indeed. Did not know that about you. Oh, my <laughs> and gosh. I sang in church choirs and did oh a gosh. lot of solo work and would sing Sandy Patty and Steve Green and all those amazing songs and, you know, grew up singing Dallas Home and Evie Tornquist and all those guys those back in names. the 70s. Yes. Yep. <laughs> and wow. while I was doing that, um, I got saved at 15 and was uh, with a, uh, a church choir group that actually would go to high schools and sing. So were you raised in church? I was, yeah. Okay. My mom and dad were uh, Baptist uh, folks that got the, had an encounter with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And so all the folks came over to our house that were all spirit-filled in the, in, the, in the community. And then we would go to full gospel meetings. We would go hear Benny Hinn or Catherine Kuhlman, watch her. Oh, wow. Uh, and, you know, I just grew up in all of that. And mm. when everybody wanted to get together and for fellowship they all came over to our house and my brother and I got to be blessed by hearing these amazing stories of how God is moving in different ways around mm -hmm. the world and it was an incredible environment and then I gave my heart to the Lord at 15 and and wanted to be a singer and actually went to Estes Park Colorado for their Christian artist seminar and competed the second year that I went got in the top 10 and then they sent me a letter said, hey, would you travel and consider traveling with us with a group called Continental Singers? 
And so this is a group that takes 15 to 16 year olds up to 26 year olds around oh, the wow. world. Uh, the guy who put it together, Cam Floria, had put together the, the Estes Park uh, Christian Artists Seminar in the Rockies, hmm. you know, where amazing people would come and sing, Sandy Patty and all these guys. Hmm. And then uh, I did that in the summer of 1982 in between my junior, senior year uh, of high school. That summer I raised all the support. My mom was my booking agent calling on <laughs> churches. I did little concerts at Sunday night, raised $3,500. Wow. Went on tour, went to Estes, you know, down into uh, California mm -hmm. and did a, a, a 10 day workshop training, had the tour. We went through Southern California, uh, throughout the Southern part of the United States, up the Eastern seaboard, met my mom and dad. And then over to uh, our tour was tour in, and we went to Stockholm and Germany and Sweden and Holland. Oh my god! And gosh. then came back, went through the northern half, clipped the tail end of the corner of Oregon down there in the <laughs> desert in between Idaho and Oregon and California and then landed and then finished up high school in Georgia. Wow. So after that experience of being with kids that loved God more than me, <laughs> even though I was raised in a Christian home and went to a quote Christian school, I wanted to be in full-time music, full-time ministry. So I got uh, a scholarship to go to Belmont University in Nashville, Tennessee. Wow. My dad also cut down some pine trees so I could go to be the first grandson to go to college hmm. out of the Autry family. And after about a year, the Lord said to me, I didn't really call you to, do, to music. I want to do more with your life than just music. And I said, okay, what am I supposed to do? And he, so I had a friend that was a marketing professor and he said, why don't you consider looking at some business courses? And I loved it. I took my entire college career of education and thought about how could I use this for ministry? How could I use this for ministry? And so my entire business education experience was looking through the lens of how could I use this for ministry? Mm. So after two years, I worked in, uh, I had my degree and God said, just wait. And I'm thinking, wait for what? You know, he said, just wait. And so I worked for two years in the hotel industry at the Opryland Hotel serving tables. Oh my gosh, no way. <laughs> I did, God said, go do that. A friend of mine was doing it and making some money. I wasn't making telephone so, you know, sales calls for Brentwood Music and I hated telephone sales. And so I served tables. <laughs> Done a little of that myself, <laughs> yeah. yes. Served table for two years. And in that process, God taught me how to love people because I'd never been in a worldly situation with mm. people that didn't know God. Mm. And I was able to earn the right to be heard and plant seeds as, as the opportunity arose. Mm -hmm. And after two years, a full gospel businessman had a convention at the Opryland Hotel. Hmm. Met one of the guys who worked there six months later. He said, I think you need to move to California. And I said, I think I'm supposed to. Wow. And when I moved, they had just laid off a third of the staff. And the guy said, you know, um, I think we can hire you for 90 days. And after that, we'll see what happens. And nine months later, my boss and his boss both retired. And now I'm running the chapter department, the membership department, and the world convention department for Full Gospel Business oh Fellowship. My Working gosh. with Dean Shakari and then his son Richard and all these amazing people, planning the world conferences in Boston and Orlando and San Francisco. And it was just like a dream come true. And then God said, you're done. <laughs> and I'm thinking, what? <laughs> I just yeah. got here. Right and moved to Northern California to uh, work with Northern California for gospel. Hmm. And that's where I met my wife, Susan. And so I was 30 and we got married at 31. And then I got a job here in Portland, coming up and working at KKPZ Radio and became the station manager. And, and that uh, brings us up to speed of you know where we're at right now. Yeah. And my journey. Right, <laughs> wow. Mm -hmm. How long would you say you felt, feel like you've been in ministry? Well, like I said, I really wanted to be in full-time ministry when I started singing. Um, and, and you were how old at that point? Um, I got saved at 15 right. and started singing, you know, around the, this country and, and so forth and toured with Continentals when I was seven, 16 or 17. So you kind of felt as a teenager oh, yeah. oh, that you yeah. were called to full-time ministry. Absolutely. I wanted to travel the world and just work for Jesus. You wow. Know? That was my passion. That's, uh, that's rare but at that age. But the aspect of... Again, having grown up and, and seeing God move and touch people's lives and seeing so many miracles all the time, I just knew that more people needed to see that and know mm. that. And I wanted to do that, but the Lord said, I'm gonna hold you back and I want you to do that as a businessman like your dad wow. versus as a minister. And so that's where I, I got my education and, and, and I still do that today. I have my own company, uh, Kingdom Technologies Group, which is just an LLC. Yeah. And so I'm contracted to be the executive director of 
serving our neighbors. I was contracted to be the executive director of, of the Christian Chamber. And then this summer when we had Franklin Graham here and then Chris Overstreet with Compassion Action, right. I had a contract with them to give them a certain amount of hours and then utilize all of the networks that we've built over the last 22 years of churches and ministries and business connections yeah. and intercessors and so forth to pour into these two incredible uh, opportunities that yeah. Portland had to see God visit and bring a lot of people into the kingdom. Right. And so that was how that whole fits together for me. Yeah. Um, can you tell us about some of the different ministries that you have supported sure. and that you're active in sure. now and what's available to people so people know um, just what's available here? Because yeah. I didn't know about some of these, so it's kind of nice to know. Yeah. Well, after we got the Christian Chamber up and running and launched that, about two years ago, God said, I want you to shut it down. And hmm. so we, in obedience, kind of shocked the community. Why are you closing the Christian Chamber? And the Lord said, I want to give you a new model. That was a model for an, a different season, and you're moving into a new season. Okay. And because you're not fully reaching uh, millennials or different ethnic groups or high-end CEOs that all love what you're doing, they just couldn't connect to your membership model or your revenue uh, you know, meeting structure, um, what we are beginning to explore and put together right now is a new thing called the Marketplace Coalition. And so the Marketplace Coalition will be just a simple luncheon. We'll probably start it up in January. We had four kind of target luncheons this year to kind of open the conversation up with our Christian business community if they would be wanting to be a part of this. Mm -hmm. And so the, it's a simple luncheon that then people could sign up to be in a small group. And in that small group, they'll take the content of that luncheon and they'll work toward excellence and push each other to a place of engaging with that information and content on a business context. And then they'll meet two weeks later in a huddle group again and work on one of, one of the guy's you know, uh, issues that he's having challenges with in his business hmm. or his family hmm. and kind of talk through that and, and structure that and, and see if they can come up with a solution. This particular new model is gonna be yeah. something that we can replicate. Very effective. So it's marketplacecoalition.com or .org People can find out about that. We hope to p turn that on coming okay. up in uh, ne the first of the year. Okay. The other thing that we worked on for a couple years and, and kind of goes back to that beginning of Serving Our Neighbors is uh, back in 2016, we had an event here in Portland at the convention center called the Emergency Preparedness Leadership Forum. And we brought about 800 business leaders and faith leaders and government leaders together to start building relationships with each other so that they would know, like, and trust each other before a disaster happens. Good. Wow. It was phenomenal. Had a great success with that. Really want to see that happen again. And then I'm very excited about uh, another initiative that's been on our heart for many, many years as we've been praying for the city is to bring uh, business and the faith community together along with government to address the homeless issue. Mm -hmm. in our city mm -hmm. and so we've been praying into that we've got an initiative called the hat initiative that targets HAT homeless addicted and trapped and oh, will help wow. bring hope and transformation wow. and uh, you know in the action to them that will create a place of honor and hosp you know hospitality and uh, so it's a we've been talking with several nonprofits several business guys and uh, and government leaders to see how we Good. can all yeah. collaborate together. Yes. I was in a meeting with at City Hall many, many years ago, and the city said, you know, we're 10 years into, uh, we're, we have a 10-year project, we're three years into it, where we're going to solve homelessness in, in Portland, and that was 10 years ago, and it's, and it's four times worse. Mm. And uh, over the last three years, as we help people, um, the only people that we never see again after we've done all this uh, services for them are the people that are connected to a spiritual community. Hmm. And he was saying to a bunch of pastors, it says, if you're not part of the solution, hmm. we have to help these people all over again and can't wow. help new people. It's the same people. Yeah. And so that really was an eye opener for right. us is that the faith community has got to be intricately engaged mm -hmm. in what the business community can do and what the government could do. Hmm. And they can't do it by themselves or without the faith community that's involved. That's good. And so that's one of the kind of things. Serving Neighbors is about uh, building, um, you know, raising up leaders and building bridges to better our community. And so we've been doing that behind the scenes, you know, for the last 22 years, mm. pr primarily through prayer, but through very strategic conversations and yeah. discussions. Uh, for a couple of years, I managed an event called the Good Friday Breakfast. And that was a group of business guys that came together every year and had a great breakfast for about 1,500 leaders, mm -hmm. keynote speaker. And I was the event manager for that. And 
as I've been working with the YMCA and the ministry that was kind of presenting that to the community and covering all the expenses for it, uh, was uh, Open Arms International and they wanted to release that. And I said, hey, I've been working with the YMCA, why don't we ask them to see if they'll do it? And then they took over that this year. Mm. And so that's another initiative or partnership that, we, that we're part of and mm -hmm. work with, is partnering with the Y. And then we do an annual event in Clark County called the Clark County uh, Prayer Breakfast. And that's with Full Gospel Business Spin, with Serving Neighbors, and with the YMCA. Oh. And the three of us kind of collaborate together, and that's usually in October, November. Okay. And we bring together mayors and county commissioners and first responders and wounded warriors and veterans and just honor them. Wow. And have a special guest speak and, and just basically say thanks to them. That's great. For their service. And yeah. so I'd like to see that kind of replicated throughout the, the whole region and see a, a a Clackamas County prayer breakfast or a Washington yeah, County prayer right. breakfast. Wow. So that's one of our other initiatives that we're working on. Okay. And there's one you mm -hmm. didn't mention, okay. the Nehemiah <laughs> Project. Exactly. Well, um, we've been partnering when we started the Christian Chamber of Commerce. God brought us these amazing ministries that teach business people about the kingdom and how to run their business according to biblical models. Mm -hmm. And even though I have a degree in business, uh, uh, and with an emphasis in marketing, I'd never seen the Bible unpacked the way mm. Patrice Sege does with mm. biblical entrepreneurship. His ministry is called Nehemiah Project, Inter International Ministries, and it's nehemiahproject.org. But uh, as I went through that training in 2009, that gave me the insight and the infrastructure to be able to you know, engage with uh, setting up my own business and becoming an, a biblical entrepreneur. And then he introduced us to Ford Taylor with Transformation Leadership, and then they introduced us to other teaching partners. So that's one of the things that I love doing is watching business people come into an understanding of what their assignment is and how to fulfill it and give them the tools and resources to do it. Yeah. I have another question for you. Um, how does God, I believe God gives us all gifts. Yes. And um, speaks to us all. He knows our language. How would you say God speaks to you most? Well, in my everyday life, I have time when I do seek the Lord and read His Word, and there's times when scriptures are highlighted, mm -hmm. and it's just what I needed for mm -hmm. that day, <laughs> or I didn't know I needed it until it comes, you know, later on that that afternoon. Yeah, uh, I'm constantly praying and praying in the Spirit, and just uh, always have one ear tuned to the kingdom and one ear tuned to what's happening around me. Mm -hmm. And God puts me in a lot of different meetings and a lot of different uh, environments, and with the mayor's office and city hall and and uh, just amazing opportunities, and I'm able to speak into that as the Lord opens the door. Um, also have uh, times when I just go seek the Lord and, and get some downloads. Uh, I am in the process of all this, writing a book that will come out soon. <laughs> okay. And so I've been asking the Lord, how does life work? And he unpacks some things that I'd love to share one day. And it's, it's amazing how life uh, put God, you know, put things together and, and what do you need to do to turn all those things on. Mm. And so in that, I love also praying for people. And as I pray for people, I see pictures and, and word, uh, words and, and have thoughts and, and I'm able to minister to people with different uh, encouraging words and so forth. And mm -hmm. so um, there's lots of ways that God's Holy Spirit talks to us and That's engages good. us yes. and leads us. And sometimes we don't even know it and we just happen to show up and be at the right place at the right time. <laughs> this is true. Well, my show is called God Encounter, yes. so I have to ask <laughs> if you have a God encounter that might stand out in your mind that you'd like yeah. to share. Well, the one that came to mind that I just uh, really sets the stage for what we're all called to do is while I was working with Cindy Jacobs as her state coordinator for her uh, Reformation Prayer Network, I was down in San Jose and at a conference and she said, James, there's going to be a marketplace revival and Portland will be a portal for the Holy Spirit and the fire is going to hit the mm -hmm. churches in Salem and the YOM base. And I came back up to Portland just a few weeks later and we were having a prayer event in the square, in Pioneer Courthouse Square, on 10-10-10. Mm -hmm. And uh, Kay Tallman had put it together and uh, we were worshiping the Lord and all of a sudden we look up and these seagulls are flying in formation, which doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. And the presence of the Lord was so thick that I just had to lay prostrate on the bricks and just say, God, you are incredible and you're most holy. And uh, that was an amazing experience. Mm. I actually was able to experience Portland being a portal for the Holy wow. Spirit. And so much more has come out of that prayer time. 
as well as others that God has had us do uh, that's brought us to this place where we see you know, the, the atmosphere change and, yeah. and God beginning to move like he can and will and will continue to do. <laughs> Speaking of, mm -hmm. I don't think we touched on this yeah. one, but every Saturday, yeah. what do you do? Well, every Saturday morning at 7 a.m., we meet at Pioneer Courthouse Square and we do a prayer walk. Sometimes we pray there and just stay. Sometimes God sends us some places. But the last three years, we've been there every single week. Mm. Rain or shine, mm. it's only sprinkled on us twice. Wow, Usually that's been, amazing <laughs> in <laughs> Portland. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we just uh, intercede. We've got a core group of people. If people show up, I buy them breakfast. And uh, it's a lot of fun to see people mature in how to pray what's on God's heart. And that's our whole focus is what, what, what's on your heart today? Yeah. And how can we engage with what God wants to see happen? So 7 a.m. 7 a.m. And you meet where? At the Starbucks at Pioneer Courthouse Square. Okay. And how long does this go for? It's from uh, 7 to 9. Okay. And we end sharply right at 9 so people can go. And if people want to stick around, we go eat breakfast. Okay, and you treat them to breakfast. I how do. big of a crowd? I'm sure it varies, but how on it the does. average? Yeah, we've got about 25 folks that have wow. been coming and going. We've had special guests that come in. Uh, but on average, it is between 5 to 15. Okay. You know, sometimes it's a small group. Sometimes it's mm -hmm. quite a few, and not everybody goes to breakfast. Yeah. And the fun thing is, is that uh, also people will uh, step up to the plate, and they pick, take take care of the breakfast for everybody, you know? Wow. And there's this spirit of generosity. The Lord said to us, when we go in and pray and prayer walk, I want you to seal that with a physical exchange and actually invest into the city mm. and bless the businesses. Mm. And so that's what we're doing. We're giving our time, our talent and treasure into the city. That's good. And then God honors that and, and that releases what he wants to see happen. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I know my friend Meredith does yes, that she pretty does. faithfully. She is very faithful. I'm to not there. as good at getting up at 6 a.m. I'm like, ah, I'll <laughs> sit it out. I'm sorry. I, <laughs> I pray for the city, but I don't do it with everybody else. <laughs> Um, any miracles that you can think of that might come to your mind? Any stories that, well, mm. actually, you know, some of the, the money that's been given to you is pretty miraculous in my book. I it mean, is. not everybody writes out $55,000 checks, 100000 100, Exactly. Right. So yeah. I'd say you've experienced the favor of God in upon your life ways. in a, a lot, lot of ways. In a yeah. lot of ways. Yeah. It's constant. I mean, there was a, a period of time in 2009 that we had to declare bankruptcy. We thought we could keep the house. We mm, lost it. Mm. You know, I stepped down from the radio station. Susan had just stepped down from being at the Hilton Hotel, and, and God provided. I mean, over But you were probably and saying, and Lord, what are you doing right now, right? <laughs> well, I mean, I'm sure yeah. your mind was going, what yeah, is going well, on? Yeah, what was happening is that he was taking us through this pruning process, and he wanted us to be out of the world system mm -hmm. and be able to live faithfully with what he had given us and so mm -hmm. we haven't had any credit cards or any credit line for wow. probably yeah 2009 nine years now wow and everything's now recovered and and we're just you know being very intentional to follow his leading as to how we use our resources for his kingdom and purposes and God's that's provided great. in many ways yeah wow that's great